As service dog handlers, we have a set of unwritten rules that we try to follow. And today I'm going to walk you through a few of them. Hello, beautiful. Thanks for clicking on today's video. If you're new here, my name is Erica. This is Sophie, my missing brother's service dog. And this is Miss May. She's a rescue and we are trying to find her home. As with any community, there are some unwritten rules that service dog handlers will follow. And so today I'm gonna to go through five of them. The first one is four on the floor, sometimes. I say sometimes because service dogs have to be trained to go out in public. There are gonna be medical alert dogs that need to be up close to the handler so that they can smell the hormonal changes in saliva. And so this might mean having a very small service dog like a Chihuahua or a Yorkie carrying them in a bag around your chest so that they could smell your mouth. And this is going to vary based off the service dog team. But aside from the exception of medical alert dogs, there is a rule that your service dog needs to stay on the ground. And when you're out in public, your dog should be walking beside you. They shouldn't be up on chairs or couches. They shouldn't be getting onto tables. They shouldn't be up in a shopping cart. They shouldn't be on a restaurant's chair. They need to stay on the ground. And there's a lot of reasons for this, but a lot of it is just out of respect. Rule number two is to be prepared. Have you ever heard of Murphy's Law? Whatever can go wrong will go wrong. Now, I'm not trying to be a pessimist here. As service dogs, they're well-trained and well-behaved. And one of the few rules that the American with Disabilities Act has is that your dog needs to be potty trained. And so you may have a service dog five, six years and never have an accident. And all of a sudden your dog gets sick and they might have explosive diarrhea in the middle of Walmart. What do you do? You have to call someone over and ask for help or you can be prepared. And so I always keep a fanny pack with me and I have a little Ziploc bag that I've got Clorox wipes in. I keep napkins, poop bags, and sanitizer. And while I normally don't have to use it, there might be a time where I need to be prepared. You wanna be able to clean it up discreetly and quickly and then be able to remove your dog from that situation because dogs do get sick and they are living, breathing creatures. Even the most well-trained dogs might have an accident. So be prepared as a service dog handler and always carry a cleaning supply kit with you. Rule number three is that people shouldn't really see your dog. Yes, you're going to have a dog with you and they may be small or they may be large, but you want your dog to be trained enough that they're not standing out in a crowd. They're not calling attention. They're not being super hyper or getting the attention of strangers. So one of the biggest compliments I get when I go out with Zion is, Oh, I didn't even see there was a dog there. That is the best compliment I can get because that means he's unobtrusive, he's out of the way. And so my goal is to minimize the amount of interactions we have. And so by keeping him quiet and under control by my side, it draws less attention to us. The next rule is that when you are out in public and a stranger stops and asks you about your service dog, you wanna be polite, but firm. Now there's a saying that there's only a few guarantees in life. One, taxes. Two, death. And three, being stopped while you're out with a service dog. And so even if you have the most well-trained, unassuming dog, you're gonna get stopped sometime or another. Whether that's if someone's asking about the training, whether that's somebody asking to pet your service dog, or it's someone being rude. And strangers can ask some very intrusive and, you know, unhelpful questions and they can say some really mean things and you may be the only service dog team that they ever see and so the impression that you leave on that stranger is going to be a lasting one and we want to be polite and so to give you an example someone will come up and ask to pet zion and your answer to this is going to vary based off of your service dog team but my personal response would be something along the lines of Thank you so much for asking. He's my service dog and he's working right now. If you ever see us and he's off duty, I would love to let you pet him, but right now he's got to stay focused on his job. So I'm polite and I'm firm and strangers can push boundaries and they can overstep some lines and ask some really intrusive questions. So you have to advocate for yourself and don't let them push you too far. 
but also remember that we are in the age of cell phones and everybody's got a camera. So don't end up on the next news station being a hateful service dog handler. We need to be respectful and we need to give grace. And I always recommend if you're gonna turn someone down, give them a compliment first. It, it normally goes over a little bit better. But you wanna be an advocate for the community. And this leads us into the next unwritten rule. And this is gonna be heavily based off of the United States, but other countries have similar policies. So look at where you're at, but in America, you're not legally allowed to ask for a service dog's ID. And this is for a lot of reasons. One of them is that service dogs are allowed to be owner trained or program trained. And a lot of programs will have ID cards that they give out. And this can be totally valid, but it becomes a problem when you're out in public and somebody asks for an ID card. And yeah, you may have one and you could show it, but they're not legally allowed to ask for it. And if you showed them that ID card, the next handler that comes in is gonna probably get asked the same question. And when they say they don't have an ID card because it's not legally required, they could be discriminated against. But it's also a problem for other reasons. And one of them is that people will go online and support these fake scam registries. And they're not recognized and they take advantage of unknowing people and so then when a business owner is trying to remove an untrained pet dog, all they have to do is show an ID card that they bought online. And an ID card is not what makes a service dog. The training is what makes a service dog. And so using this loophole and trying to take advantage of people that don't know any better, it can be a big problem. All right, well, those were my five unwritten rules for service dog handlers. Let me know some other rules that we have because I think we have quite a few. But these are some of the ones that I definitely noticed when I got into the community that were pretty universal. So let me know if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more. I am still looking for a home for little Miss May here. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great day.